Greetings, everyone. This is Sean Dyer coming to you today from Mr. Dyer's Musings. Um, today, my video is going to discuss my Civil War Officer's Field Desk before I break it down and put it away for a little while. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife and my loving family for all their love and support. I would like to thank my incredible students for always keeping me on my toes. And I would like today to thank, thank all of uh, you who you know, keep encouraging me to make these uh, videos. I really appreciate it. I hope they're useful. I hope, um, if nothing else, especially during this downtime that we have, it gives you a little bit of insight and entertainment. Um, maybe it will encourage you to do some of your own reading and research, especially about the Civil War period, because there's a plethora of information that's out there. And the devil's in the details, so to speak. So uh, let's begin. Um, my field desk is made by me. It was reproduced by me. Uh, I based it off of an original one that was used by a doctor who um, served in the Eastern Theater. That would be the Army of Potomac. Um, his original, he it's on Cohen's auction site. So if you're interested in checking it out, um, search Cohen's auction site. This is a surgeon's Civil War desk. Um, I, it's loosely based off of that. I, on the site, it gives dimensions. Um, so I based my desk off of those rough dimensions and uh, just kind of backwards designed it. And this is my first field desk I ever made. So it's not too bad. There's definitely some mistakes in it and there's some learning curves, but that's the part of the process. You know, when you do some experimental, experimental archaeology, you learn things um, that you didn't know before, and that way you can improve upon it next time. So my Civil War Officer's Field Desk was used by a surgeon, um, and I have no idea what he necessarily kept in all the different places, but it offers a lot of opportunity uh, for someone who likes me who likes to read for a place for books. Um, field desks were, generally speaking, used for writing out paperwork, keeping paperwork, uh, the day-to-day -day office work of being an officer. Now, I tend to reference three specific doctors in my videos, um, Dr. Brinton, uh, Dr. Wilder, and Dr. Holt. Uh, Dr. Wilder especially gives so much detail in his memoir that I can kind of piece together what his day-to-day -day, uh, would have looked like and what kind of reports that he would have regular, regularly used and um, participated in. And that's what my desk is going to reflect. Um, Dr. Holt talks a little bit more uh, about the day-to-day -day minutia of reports and stuff than Dr. Brinton, but Dr. Brinton was also so high up that he was more involved in um, uh, going around and inspecting, uh, working in Washington, D.C., uh, things like that. So my field desk represents a soldier, an officer, medical officer, that was out in the field um, doing his stuff. Now, Field desks were liable to be captured and taken. So that's a, a very real possibility. Um, Dr. Wilder doesn't really talk about that happening to him in his book. Uh, Dr. Holt, on the other hand, did have his personal footlocker with his dress uniform and everything, uh, his uh, oil cloth and his blanket was completely taken from him. It did get returned, though. You know, there was an, an honor among thieves or something like that, where, generally speaking, officers would return uh, other officers' goods. So that's pretty cool. Um, even surgical sets. Uh, Dr. Holt, I think it was... It might have been Dr. Brenton, but one of those two, their surgical sets uh, ended up being taken, and it was l later returned. Um, so, all right. So this is my, my field desk. And it latches in three places. It latches on the front, and it latches on the side, which makes it very secure. And it has a lid, like so that encloses it. My bookcase that you see here is, um, it's kind of hard to do. My bookcase here 
is uh, comes off and it gets placed in front here. So this comes off, gets placed in front, and it's all self-encapsulating. All right. Um, up top here, I'll show you. I have my wire just in case I'm using it outside of my tent. I don't want the wind to take my uh, lid off. Again, I don't know what the original surgeon put in his, and this is what I keep in mind. So it's not exactly probably 100% accurate. Um, surgeons tend to have a little bit more access to their belongings than a regular field officer because we are, generally speaking, in the back. Um, our baggage is also, generally speaking, kept in the back, which that's kind of dangerous when you think about all the hospital stores. But anyhow, so I have my riding gloves as a surgeon. I was expected to ride. So if I'm riding a horse, this is not going to be in my field desk. I also have in here my dress sash. Now, generally speaking, your dress sash would only be used during formal dress parade, etc. If you're walking around camp, uh, most likely you, you might be wearing it if you're going to be visiting another officer or doing your formal duties. But if you're in your own space, personal space, you're not going to wear it. It gets in the way. I um, also have my rubber blanket in here. So that's all on one side where the divider is. Um, the second side here, I, I haven't really figured out what I'm going to put in there. I just, this was a winter project, something I've been wanting to do for a few years. I just finally got it finished. So I'm still working out some of the kinks. Um, my books here. Now, Wilder and uh, Brenton talks a lot about the books that they use and they're reading, they're referencing. Wilder's actually writing up his uh, thesis to become a, a formal MD, a medical doctor. Okay. Holt was already a medical doctor, so he's really not working on his thesis, but he does talk about some reading. Um, Brenton is uh, an academic. So he's always reading. There is a website online um, that is curated by uh, a doctor team. And I think it's Medical Antiques. But in that fantastic, well done, well put together website, there are references to the entire catalog of books that surgeons had access to to order. There were pretty much a primary set that most doctors would keep in their hospital. Uh, Dr. Wilder talks about a tent, just a common tent, an A-frame tent, right? That would be put off to the side, and that was where the uh, some of the hospital stores would be and the library would be. So there would be a box or some type of chest or something with the various reference books for the surgeons to go to in case they needed it. So literature is extremely important for surgeons. Uh, so far in my library... And inside my house, I actually have Wilder's book, but I have Holt's book. I have Britton's book here. Um, I usually keep Wilder's in there. Norman Publishing, back in the early 90s and the late 80s, they did a run of reproduction medical books, medical texts. And I'm slowly getting a collection of those, but um, I've only got two so far. And that is A Practical Treatise of Military Surgery and The Handbook for the Military Surgeon. I figured those are the two um, most important ones priority wise to get so that's what i have uh, i'll get more though and i plan on keeping them here in this space because it's a lot larger uh, a wider space i also have the hospital Sto stewards manual which if you're just getting the medical reenacting the hospital stewards manual is a fantastic first place to go to because this is an enlisted man's hop um uh, book. So it's going to be a crossover between the enlisted and the officer. And it does a really good job of putting out detail uh, who's responsible for what and exactly what it goes into, including cooking. So there's actually recipes in here, what they call receipts, for various foods that would be cooked and served in the hospital setting. I also have Two other books here. I'm going to give a shout out to Charlie's Bootworks for making this. This is a really good reproduction. The originals were a little bit bigger, though. 
So that's something to keep in mind, um, as just for your own personal use. But he's the only one who's reproducing these right now. And it is the Morning Reports book and the Prescription book. And I waited forever. I was actually going to reproduce these both myself uh, from one of the originals in Medical Antiques website. And the doctor was really great to send me the information to. But Charlie Boatworks beat me to it. And uh, now I don't have to do the work. So these books would have been kept in the squib paneer. Um, so every squib paneer that would have been issued, you would have got a set of those. You could also order more if you needed, but there you go. Um, and I can get into paperwork later. Again, like the minutia, the amount of detail that gets involved with doing historical reenacting and living history, it's to me, it's fascinating because you're always learning. You're always getting something new out of it. Now, I also have a reproduction Civil War Testament here. It pretty much just covers the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Um, most people were very religious in the 1800s. Dr. Wilder, since I referenced him, he uh, doesn't really go into detail a lot about his uh, personal faith. Um, he doesn't really drink he doesn't really smoke. If he does drink, it's going to be brandy. He doesn't drink whiskey. He just tastes beer. Um, Holt, on the other hand, I think is more of a religious man. Um, Brenton is a religious man, I'd say. Wilder does have a really good relationship with the chaplain, um, but he doesn't really talk about his personal feelings too much in regards to his relationship with God and his faith. Uh, if you're an officer... In the Union Army, you should have the regulations. So these are the revised regulations for the Army of the United States in 1861. So I keep that in my desk. All right, so now my drawers. So I have a variety of different drawers. And for the most part, I keep them kind of separate between um, personal items and business items or uh, tools. Again, I don't know if the original surgeon did that or not. But having all these different drawers and knowing the amount of paperwork that your average surgeon would need to keep on this person, I don't think that you would necessarily need all those drawers. Um, they would keep records, so uh, circulars, etc. cetera. Um, I plan on adding more books to the top, by the way. Uh, there's uh, some ledgers I want to get. I just recently found an original example of a Civil War surgeon's uh, books that he had, and they weren't actually even formal medical department books. They were just marbleized, paper-backed uh, ledgers that he would use himself for keeping track of various different things. So when I get to that, another video. All right, but I digress. So in one of my drawers here, I have my personal items. So these are kind of like my entertainment things that I would do. I have a harmonica. It's in a, a, this is not a reproduction harmonica. This is not an original harmonica. This is a very new Honor Special 20 harmonica. So not exactly um, authentic, but I do play harmonica. Um, harmonicas uh, need taken care of, so I keep it in a plastic case. I have extra leather thong here, or string. I do have... A foldable tin cup. So you can see that's an original. Um, I replaced the box. I keep the box up in my office because um, it's really fragile and old. So I found that cardboard box from Hobby Lobby. Keep an extra cravat because as a gentleman, you should wear a cravat. I also keep a, a homemade bag with homemade checkers and a checkerboard in here. It's all rolled up. So it's really nice and tight stays in place. I have my cigar tin. I have my housewife. Now, housewives were generally speaking uh, fabric rolled up articles. I keep my um, sewing kit in a nice little tin. Does a good job. I also have my pipe bag, my homemade pipe. I made that personally out of uh, an applewood piece and a reed, and I also made the pipe bag. Keeping your brass spit and polish 
was a, an important thing, which I need to do that on my uniform. So I have my button cloth guard here. Now, officers, generally speaking, had um, servants. Holt, who was a captain eventually, he had a servant. Uh, Wilder, who was a first lieutenant as a surgeon, he, maybe he was a captain too. I don't remember. Uh, but he also talked about his servants. So even low-ranking officers, not necessarily uh, senior officers, had servants. I also did a homemade uh, playing card box out of cherry. I'm somewhat decent with woodworking. I can always learn more. I can always refine my skill. But I'm a teacher, not a carpenter. So my time spent learning how to teach and learning more material to pass on to my students. All right, I'm going to quickly put that away. The nice thing about this original desk is it has these recessed um, poles here. Those little finger poles. Those are pretty nice just to grab and go. And one of my other lower drawers, I have... Okay, there we go. I have socks. So I have my socks here. And I have an extra shirt. Right there. Again, I don't know what he kept in his desk. I mean, that's he's carrying around a knapsack, and I don't have a horse right now. So, uh, as an officer, I'd probably keep a lot of these personal items on uh, what's called a portimo or a, uh, a leather case, and strap it to the back of my horse to carry on with me. Now, I have another drawer that's dedicated to writing. And I have a couple different examples of writing uh, oil wells. I have this one here, which I believe I received from the sutler at Fort Scott, which is really well done. It's a good reproduction. I also have an original hard rubber oil well. It's pretty sweet. I have a 10 match container, which has nothing to do with writing. I need to move that. I have a handmade uh, ruler. Because if you did not get your paperwork from the quartermaster, if you didn't order it, then you'd have to make your own. So it's uh, definitely important to keep communication with the quartermaster and get all your necessary supplies. Otherwise, you're going to do a lot of hard, hard work yourself. I keep extra pen nibs here. A cedar pencil. Extra paper. And I have this really handy dandy writing kit that I got from uh, Sakela. Uh, I'm going to put you inside my box so I can open it up for you. And this is really cool. I really wanted one of these for years. And what it does is as you roll it up, it has a little piece of wood here that moves and you can lock it up so you have a nice straight flat writing surface. Um, this one is Hathaway's portable writing case. Even has the circular in there. You can keep your papers. And it has another example of an inkwell, which is really neat. A lot of people who go on eBay, they see these things and they think that they're scalpels. Well, this is not a scalpel. This is actually an eraser or pen. So, you know, you scratch it away, you're good to go. Um, they also had rubber erasers back then, too. They called them rubbers. Hmm. Some more pencil. An original 19th century pen. Now, you know it's 19th century or earlier because of really skinny neck. Because the skinny neck needs to get into the ink wells. A lot of your reproduction pens, they are broad. Um... They didn't have the same needs as we do as reenactors. All right. So there's my writing stuff. Next, I in my drawer, I have my pocket kit. Now, if I'm out in the field, if I'm walking around camp or something, I actually keep my pocket kit on me. But I'm not using it. I just keep it in there. I also have a personal knife that I use.
drawer is my lighting drawer. So in it, I have two different types of lamps. I have this type of oil lamp. I have this, which is an original uh, 19th century oil lamp. Not sure if it's whale oil or just regular oil, but it's got a really neat sponge inside with um, some wire netting that keeps the sponge coming out. It's pretty cool. And I have a traditional candlestick. Okay, so I'm going to take a, a segue here and talk about lighting. Uh, I just read, reread, actually, in Wilder's book. He talks about getting a brand new kerosene lamp, you know, made from, uh, and that, that was a big deal because kerosene really wasn't that popular until the well, later 1800s. But here's Wilder talking about his brand new kerosene lamp. Um, most lamps would have been. Uh, lit by whale oil or I mean you can pretty much use any oil right we've been using oil lamps for thousands of years but whale oil especially in the medical field you would order it for your hospital tents surgical tents because they're the brightest light that you can get same thing with um, sperm candles sperm candles are going to be more expensive than just a regular beeswax candle because of the light that it puts off um Candles were still the primary source for light for most people, unless you're really wealthy. Uh, that kind of denotes when you go into a house, how is it lit? Is it lit by candles or is it going to be lit by uh, oil lamps? Um, so anyhow, there's my segue talking about different lighting. As a surgeon, I had the funds, the expenses that I could put on personal lamps and pay for oil, etc. Um... So that's kind of nice when you talk about rank and privilege and the money that you're getting per month. Your regular enlisted man's not going to carry a lamp. He's going to be carrying uh, candles in various type of ways to uh, light that candle. Personal lamps or personal candle holders, etc. that use candle lighting. All right, so let's talk about paperwork really quick. I only have three examples of paperwork that I knew that were pretty regularly used. Um, I'm still working on more, and I'm producing these myself, so they're not 100% accurate. This one is the requisition for straw, because you as a surgeon could request straw for bedding for the hospitals um, on a um, if your hospital is moving around, if you're on campaign. Generally speaking, if you're a stagnant camp for a while, you can actually request and order beds to come down for your, uh, your sick. Another one I have is a requisition for fuel. As an officer, I would get so much firewood that was allotted to me. Um, and I'll talk about that when I get into the mess dynamics of things, when you talk about officer's mess. Because officers, you got a higher pay, but you pretty much had to pay for everything yourself. Uniforms were not issued, you know, you had to pay for it. So anyhow, firewood, you could request firewood for yourself, you could request firewood for your servants, and you could request firewood for um, the hospital itself. And this is a requisition for forage. So for forage, it would have things like hay, oats, corn, and fodder. So we're not talking about foraging around for your own food. No, you're talking about forage for your horses because um, the hospital, ambulance, everything, they moved by horses. And you as an officer also got a a certain amount of hay that was allotted to you for your own personal horse. Okay, so that's really what I got so far for paperwork. I have to do another video once I build up my paperwork um, and explain each of it in a little bit more detail. There's so much minutia that's involved. I could seriously do almost a video on each and every thing, um, which maybe I'll do eventually. There's definitely plenty of material out there for it. I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I hope you liked my field desk. There's certainly simpler ones out there, uh, and it still does the same thing. You know, it's just for paperwork. Mine does double duty in this capacity. I keep my library for reference, you know, so I can refer to it as a surgeon. Um, it also keeps my paperwork, and it also keeps some of my personal belongings. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I always appreciate any new subscribers. Um, please feel free to share my videos. Uh, as an educator, it's really important to me that um, education gets out there and maybe it'll get someone interested in either reenacting or the Civil War in general. 
um, please like my page and uh, spread the word. So from Mr. Dyer, I appreciate you visiting um, and watching my video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, kiss and hug your loved ones. Keep them close. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone.